So hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, What Does a Data Steward Do? I see that participants are still joining us, but we want to start in time. So it is my pleasure to welcome you all today. I'm Elira Hassani Mavrici from Graz University of Technology. I'm leading the research data management team at TU Graz, and I'm also coordinating the Fair Data Austria project. So the, today's webinar, what does a data steward do, is organized under the scope of an event series with the name uh, Research Data Management Austria. This event series is aimed at researchers and research support staff and serves to promote the networking, but also the exchange of information and knowledge on the topics on research data management tools and services. This event series is organized from the partners of Fair Data Austria project, which is a project funded by the Ministry of Education. And the partners, you can see the logos of them also in this slide. Depending on the topic, we also collaborate with our national funding agencies and other networks and initiatives. Today's focus is on data stewards. As we all know, um, it is evident that that data-driven scientific research is here to stay. And we experience that researchers need extra support to deal with their research data. So universities and other research institute, institutions, they have to plan and they have to think of expanding the existing scientific and support staff position. In this regard, establishing data stewardship uh, programs is um, of a major, uh, has a major role. But what data stewards really do, uh, we need, are experiencing uh, from different uh, stakeholders that there is not a common understanding on the role and on the formalization of um, this uh, uh, profession of a data steward. Are data stewards supposed just to uh, provide advice to researchers, just to help them um, um, establish a data management plan? Or should they also deal with analysis of uh, different data sets? And today we want to tackle all these open questions. Uh, and also we aim to achieve some kind of clar clarity in this regard. And I'm very happy that uh, we have two invited speakers from the Netherlands. So in the first part, we will have two keynotes, the first one from Maite Yetin, and she will tell us the challenges on professionalization data stewardship in Netherlands. Then the second speaker, Heather Andrews, she will uh, explain us how data stewardship program was established at Delft University of Technology and how this evolved. We will have a screen break in between, and then we will continue with the second part in which we have planned tandem talks between data stewards at Graz University of Technology and the researchers. So there we will have more information on three practical use cases, and we will experience how data stewards and researchers work together, how they tackle these challenges, and how they define their roles in this joint endeavor. I'm very happy that uh, my colleague Sabrina Klopper uh, agreed to moderate today's webinar. And at this point, I will hand over to her. And I'm really looking forward to the talk. Thank you very much, Elire, for your introduction and presentation of today's agenda. A warm welcome to all of you also from my side. 
My name is Sabrina Knopper from the Change Management Department at Graz University of Technology, and I will guide you through this event. First of all, it's really fantastic to see so many people taking the time to join us today to get informed about data stewardship. As Elire already mentioned, the interest in data stewards uh, is growing internationally, and therefore we would like to give you a deeper insight into the role and specific tasks of data stewards that span the entire um, research data lifecycle. So two exciting presentations and three tandem talks await you. In order to avoid background noise, we kindly ask you to mute yourself. After each topic, we do a Q&A session where you have the opportunity to ask your questions. You can either post your questions into the chat or ask them directly after the presentation. So I think we're good to go and we can get started. Our first presentation will be held by Dr. Maike Jetten, who is currently a community manager for data stewardship at the Dutch Tech Center for Life Sciences in Utrecht. Before that, she has worked as coordinator of research data management and open science, has set up RDM support at the library, and was also a data steward. As part of her PhD on interreligious communication, Dr. Yedden has developed educational materials and organized training sessions. Today, she will provide us with information on professionalizing data stewardship in the Netherlands. So we really look forward to your presentation and I hereby hand over to you, Dr. Yedden. Thank you. I hope uh, I am visible and you can also hear me clearly. That correct? Can you confirm? Yes, great. Thank you. So thank you for this opportunity to speak about, uh, well, our Dutch experiences in professionalizing data stewardship. Um, thank you for the nice introduction. I'm speaking on behalf of uh, two of the companies I work for. So DTL, the Dutch Tech Center for Life Sciences, and also Healthori, which is our Dutch health uh, research infrastructure organization. And I'm going to present you today on our experiences in our national effort to professionalize uh, data stewardship. Um, if you uh, want to check the slides, because there are many relevant links in it, uh, you can do that by uh, um, copy and pasting, or maybe one of the colleagues wants to copy and paste a link into the chat so you can, you can follow uh, the slides if you uh, want to, but free to download them and reuse them uh, and click the very interesting links in it. So next slide, please. So let's start with explaining why we need to professionalize data stewardship. Why do we need to train people? Uh, uh, on the one hand, support staff, but also researchers to get skilled and uh, build capacity uh, with regard to fair data stewardship. So we all know probably that uh, more and more important data management, data stewardship, uh, open science, uh, well, it, it is becoming more and more important in uh, research, but there are various challenges. So if we look at support staff with regard to fair data stewardship, there is no consensus on uh, what kind of tasks, what kind of responsibilities and uh, well, the data steward has. And also there is a lack of a formal uh, profile and position in most of the organizations. Uh, in addition to that, there's also a lack of training. So if we have very um, um, skilled researchers, uh, who want to maybe become more skilled in supporting others in doing uh, proper data management, there is hardly training on, on uh, well, becoming a skilled uh, data steward, particularly in the FAIR area. And if we don't uh, solve these issues on uh, profiles for data stewards and education for data stewards, this uh, actually hampers adequate capacity building and also complicates efficient data management uh, to support researchers in doing open science in their uh, project. So uh, from the Netherlands, we think we need to uh, solve this nationally. We also need to have a uh, international coordination to make sure that we're not reinventing the wheel in the different countries. And that is also the aim of my uh, presentation today. I want to show you uh, the, uh, our experiences in the Netherlands and the efforts we took in uh, creating a joint capacity building efforts and hope that my talk will inspire, uh, well, uh, your organizations to uh, uh, learn from the lessons that we, uh, well, we, we got from our experiences and reports we wrote. So uh, I think what is really important that this is an effort by the community for the community. So we only got to realize this in the Netherlands because we had main support from uh, the broad community of uh, researchers and support staff and uh, uh, research organizations in the Netherlands. 
So the next slide, please. So this slide shows that uh, although I already explained that we need to build capacity with regard to data stewardship, we have still a very long way to go. There are some figures on this slide and those figures show that, well, uh, ideally we need to have three full-time equivalent per 100 researchers and that is really, really a lot. Um, well, this capacity is built uh, both from the perspective of data steward and uh, skilled uh, researchers who know what fair data stewardship uh, includes, but it also includes people who know how to train others to do proper research data management. So it's both about well, be, uh, helping research, but also training research and training future data stewards. So we, in analysis, we adjusted uh, numbers from two international uh, reports, the uh, OECD report and uh, a report by the European uh, Commission. And these numbers are even, uh, uh, well, higher. So we figure three FTE per 100 researchers is enough. But if you look at the European Committee, they're focusing at five FTE per 100 researchers. So that is really, really a lot. And we recently did a survey in the Netherlands and we asked how much um, um, uh, support staff for research data management and data stewardship there currently is in organizations. And the numbers are really, really striking. There is just too little uh, expertise to support researchers with, uh, with proper uh, data management. So the next slide, please. So in the Netherlands, we're following um, advice by uh, our colleague Baron Mons, the uh, president of CoFair and CoData. And he uh, uh, wrote recently a column in uh, Nature that we need to invest 5% of the research funds in ensuring that data is uh, being reusable. And if you invest in data stewardship, he uh, um, uh, argues this offers excellent return on investment. So this isn't a waste of money. It's not uh, money that is spent instead of focusing on research. It's uh, money to improve research, to help research to do uh, better research data management. And within the uh, uh, Dutch, uh, within the Netherlands, so we have a Dutch national program of science, abbreviated AMPOS, and we have two key areas. So the first one is 100% open access publishing. The second one is optimal reuse of fair uh, research data. And the third one is changing evaluation and valuation systems in the Netherlands. And I'm presenting today a report that is part together with another report. So uh, the report I'm presenting is the, is the data stewardship report, but we also have a report on the Dutch data infrastructure and services landscape. And those two, those two reports together uh, are part of the optimal reuse of research data uh, program line, the, the second key area that I just highlighted. And if we want to work on, on this area, opt, uh, optimizing reuse, then we need to make sure that policy regulations and budgets are uh, changing. We need to improve budgets to, to build the capacity. We also need to make sure that infrastructure and services are in place. And this only works if we realize a cultural change in the research and the research support community. So with this regard, we also have still a long uh, way to go. And the Ampos F that I'm presenting, Ampos F report that I'm presenting on today uh, is actually by and for the community. So we had over 30 representatives of different universities, university medical centers and universities for, to, uh, for applied sciences including service providers and representatives of Dutch uh, umbrella organizations to work with us together on professionalizing uh, data stewardship. So the next slide, please. So this report builds on uh, two previous reports. So in 2019, both our national coordination point research data management, you see an image on the left, and uh, uh, one uh, report that was in the area of, of uh, well, my background, so life sciences and health data. Uh, both those uh, um, projects wrote a report on the role of, of uh, data stewards. And you can see there are various roles, as was already highlighted in the introduction. You have uh, policy-oriented data stewards, you have embedded data stewards, you have generic data stewards, for instance, at libraries. You have uh, data stewards who are more focused at infrastructure, very close to um, uh, an IT uh, staff. And you also have researchers who are really, uh, uh, staff who are really, really close to research. So in some cases they are researchers and in other cases they are 
uh, data stewards who are helping researchers to do their work uh, better. And if you're interested to read about this report, a really nice read, then uh, make sure to click the link and, and check out all the documents. The next slide, please. So the MPOS F uh, report consists of seven chapters, and there is a link in uh, this slide. And if you want to have the short version in addition to this, this uh, presentation, then I advise you to read the VM view, the executive summary, and, and chapter seven, then you get the full picture. But of course, the, the, the uh, report is more uh, elaborated with two introductory chapters and four content chapters that I'm going to explain a little uh, further on this in this presentation, and then a closing uh, chapter with high-level recommendations. So next slide. So the first element uh, of the report, we started the report with doing a landscape analysis on training and education. So we did eight case studies in the Netherlands uh, from both universities, University of Applied Sciences and University Medical Centers as a first fact check on data stewardship training and education. We just wanted to know what the situation was uh, well, at the moment of, of doing the, the case studies. And what you see is an example of the TU Delft. And the TU Delft is also the, uh, the, spe the speaker of the next presentation, Heather Andrews is also from the TU Delft. Um, the TU Delft has uh, uh, data stewards, and they also have a specific uh, place for the data steward in the organization, and they have organized uh, training, learning on the job, and they, uh, in our report, they highlight the specific strengths and challenges they are tackling in their organization to organize and professionalize data stewardship. And both the profile and the reference card that you see in this slide give a really nice overview of uh, well, the situation of training and education uh, on data stewardship in the Netherlands. And we have seven more case studies of these uh, in our report. It's really nice to check them out and uh, learn from them. So the next slide. So built on this landscape analysis, we drafted out some uh, main challenges with regard to data stewardship. And I'm just going to highlight them really quickly. So there is a, a problem with formalization. There is an uh, issue with defining needs. It's really difficult to find specific needs, uh, training needs for data stewards. Uh, there is existing training, but it's hard to get uh, uh, one well, idea of that type of, of training. Where is it given? How is it given? Uh, um, um, is it paid? Is it really learning data stewards? Is it really helping data stewards? So there is a lack of insight in existing training. Um, the aspect of lifelong learning is often not uh, addressed. So they're often just trainings that are, uh, well, just a few trainings at the beginning of your career. And then the lifelong learning aspect of continuous uh, uh, training isn't uh, taken into account. Also, the strategic vision is really important. That is quite challenging. So bottom up does not, does not always work. So if you start from, uh, well, just either library or support service helping your researchers, that doesn't organize data stewardship properly in your organization, but also top down doesn't work uh, properly. So this is not something, well, this is actually something you need to do top down and bottom up together to professionalize uh, data stewardship. So it needs to be a strategic uh, vision on data stewardship. And awareness is really, really important. You can have really nice services, but if you didn't reach research, if you don't know how to get to uh, your researchers, if your researchers can't find you, then still professionalizing data stewardship is a, is a big challenge. So the next slide. So based on this, we did uh, seven recommendations. Uh, we said to our uh, uh, Dutch colleagues in um, um, the different organizations that they need to study the case studies to plan their training, that they need to care for the data steward. So the position of the data steward is really, really important. And you need to make sure that the data steward wants to stay in your organization and also um, well, uh, has opportunities to, uh, to improve his or her uh, career. If we want to organize training, we need to collaborate on that. And there is also the importance of community and networking. Then again, as said already, so a strategic vision is really important. So we need to have a coordinated approach to data stewardship and the report is, uh, the Ampos F report is helping out uh, on that. Another aspect that is really important is that we need to be, uh, well, we need to have flexibility in the job of the data steward. So this isn't something that you draw out uh, uh, from, uh, well, the drawing board and then, uh, well, uh, don't look at it anymore, that we need to be flexible and we need to adjust the needs of the data steward to the needs of, well, the different peers of the data steward. So the researcher, the, the colleagues of the data steward. So this is, uh, is really uh, important. 
Um, yes, next slide, please. Great. Uh, so um, there are some. Uh, so this was the first chapter on on the um, uh, landscape analysis, and now we move to the importance of the job profile of the data steward. So there are some specific challenges with regard to the job of the data steward as well, and that is that we, uh, based on the case studies, noticed uh, that there is a lack of proper profiles for data stewards. So they, the data stewards don't know what they, what kind of tasks they have, what kind of competences they need to have, and where they are positioned in the organization. So this is something that we need to improve. Uh, uh, further on, uh, we need to draw out proper career tracks. So uh, data stewards need to be able to to grow. And their position in the data in the organization needs to be cleared out as well. So we need to make sure where the data steward is actually needed. Is it in a, a, a support, um, uh, say, in a library or support staff role, or is it very close to the researcher and maybe even being a researcher? So the position is is really some things we need to uh, need to check out. Then, even if you can't uh, um, formalize the profiles, we need to look at the good practices because, at least in the Netherlands, there are very many there are many good practices on professionalizing data stewardship and, and examples of job profiles that we uh, need to take in, into account. And then, as I've mentioned already, there's a lack of uh, capacity, and we need to uh, increase the numbers of uh, data stewards. So, the next slide. And what we did, we drafted out uh, the, uh, a basic data steward job profile, and uh, we did that uh, from three perspectives. So from the perspective of the universities, we actually have a, a very nice job classification that is uh, uh, also uh, used in the different universities. And we use their system to, to draft out the main elements of what a data steward uh, um, uh, should do. And you can see uh, um, an overview of that in, in the uh, slide. So that includes the different expertise areas, but also the different types of data source. So the policy oriented data steward, a more research oriented data steward, and a more infrastructure oriented data steward. And in addition to that, the second step was that we also have uh, university medical centers that are, uh, um, well, less uh, rely on a formal job classification system. And uh, for them, we exchange different examples of job profiles uh, to be uh, well to allow them to reuse those job profiles and not reinventing the wheel in the different uh, organizations and then for the universities of applied sciences we proposed again a different a different job profile because it's or in our uh, university of applied sciences the focus is less on research and more on education so uh, we uh, um, made an inventory and we concluded that their profile should be a little bit uh, different so that is the third element of our job uh, profile uh, components and then what we have in analysis is also the context of the digital competence centers. These were uh, financed by NWO, one of our main uh, funders, and each of the organizations that are already mentioned, so both University of Applied Sciences, uh, University Medical Centers, and universities, all are currently establishing what is called digital competence centers. And in these digital competence centers, they're not, only re, uh, uh, they're not only data stewards, but there are also research software engineers appointed. So in addition to the uh, data steward, we also highlighted the elements of the research software engineering uh, profile. So the next slide. So based on, uh, on these examples, and you can find all the details in the report, we did uh, six recommendations. So in all the job classification systems, make sure to formalize those profiles. And then we said to the national, uh, uh, well, to our uh, uh, local universities and university medical centers and university of applied sciences that they need to adopt the profiles and they need to create a career perspectives uh, accordingly to those job profiles. And that means that we included in the job profile, we included uh, uh, different salaries, different levels. So uh, we allow, uh, the, well, the systems allow uh, uh, data stewards to grow in their position ex, uh, as well. Um, uh, at the same side, we also said that we need to create a diversity in the roles, of type, uh, roles and types of data stewards. So you will definitely need different types of data stewards, and that is included in, in our uh, uh, proposition for uh, the job profile. Uh, we also said that uh, if you, as long as we don't have the formal uh, profiles uh, in place yet, we need to make sure that we adopt our, the good practices that are around. And of course, we need to secure the position of 
the data stored for the long term. So the next slide. Then the next chapter is about training, education, and certification. So with regard to training and education, there's also uh, uh, there are some challenges. So uh, there are actually a lot of trainings for data stewards and for researchers to become data stewards, but it's really hard to find them. Uh, so that is one big uh, challenge. Then again, there is the, the mismatch with the competences. So if you know what, what data stewards need to do, uh, often this is not clearly laid out and explained in the training that is available. So the learning outcomes aren't clear and uh, well, this, we highly recommend such organizations to combine the com competences with specific trainings on all of these uh, competences. Uh, then coordination is, uh, is a big challenge as well. Some, are, some trainings are organized locally, some nationally, and in some cases local organizations wait for national organizations to organize training and national organizations kind of assume that local organizations provide those training. So, so we need to make sure that coordination is organized uh, as well. And ideally you want to uh, certificate these trainings as well to show that these trainings are really something that uh, your future data stewards need to, uh, uh, need to follow to become uh, uh, competent data stewards. So the next slide. So we did in our uh, report an inventory of training resources, a really nice annex with, with different training resources available both nationally and internationally. And we did a pilot annotation of uh, matching the competences that we drafted out for the data stewards with those training to see how the trainings uh, met the, the uh, objectives or the competence in their objective, uh, the competences that were uh, required of the data stewards. And we also did an inventory of, of existing uh, certification mechanisms for different categories. So for courses, for trainees, for trainers, and for organizations. And we uh, concluded that certification is still in its early days and we need to align and work together in European or even global uh, uh, collaborations to realize uh, a good certification for data stewardship. Other recommendations with regard to training, education, and certification are that uh, well, we need to standardize the metadata for training to allow training to be uh, better findable. We need to develop uh, a training annotation process with this uh, uh, metadata, with the standardized metadata. And this way we create curated resources that are really good findable. And uh, that also <coughs> means that uh, future data stewards know what they, uh, uh, well, what, the, uh, uh, what they will realize if they follow those uh, trainings. So that is uh, realized with uh, curated resources and uh, standardized metadata. And of course, we need to align with those international certification initiatives that are, for instance, taking place within uh, GoFair and the Research Data Alliance. And there in the Netherlands, there needs to be a certification provider who needs to uh, care who takes care of well, aligning those certification and that data stewards and organizations know that they follow the proper uh, data stewardship training. So the next slide. Um, our uh, last chapter is actually about a data steward skills tool. We didn't build a skills tool yet because we actually didn't have the money to build the tool. There was no one, no organization yet who wants to fund such a data steward skills tool. But we think that all these elements, so uh, competences, and um, um, the training uh, based on the different profiles of the data stewards uh, is ideally be to be included in a, a tool that allows all people to find, uh, uh, well, all these elements of professionalizing data stewardship. So that is the data stewards themselves, but that is also uh, the employers who are looking for recruitment, uh, employers and employees who want to make an assessment of their current skills, and also training providers that want to develop new training opportunities. So they, these could Sorry, I think I pressed the button because I was uh, muted at once. Um, so then the next slide, please. Okay, so this, uh, if we talk about data stewardship, this, uh, uh, this challenge summarizes several other challenges that all are already men uh, mentioned here. I'm not gonna dive into detail uh, uh, into them again, but it's good to see that this uh, need for a data stewardship 
uh, to solve the challenges that we saw also with regard to the landscape, with regard to the profiles and with regard to the terrain. So we think this is really an answer to all this uh, information in the, in the report. So the next slide, please. Uh, so this is just to show you that we, we didn't build it to uh, yet, hopefully, but we did draft out different uh, personas that uh, uh, could, could make use of such a tool, and we drafted out the way they uh, um, ideally want to walk to, through such a tool, and that includes also elements like a self-assessment, a really nice overview of available training, maybe if, even an event page with existing training and nice events like webinars that, that uh, data stewards could uh, learn from and become uh, more skilled. So the next slide. Um, so uh, what we did for the da this data steward skills tool, we made the sketch uh, and, and examples on the previous page already show uh, some of the elements of the sketch and we drafted out uh, five data steward personas that we at least uh, uh, see in the Nellis. There are probably more personas, but those five could really benefit fit from such a tool. And together with Elixir Europe, we already included part of these elements in their existing EBI competency hub uh, tool. So this is actually the beginning of building the tool that we envision to be uh, uh, live in, uh, well, hopefully as soon as possible. And this is really a nice overview. The competency hub gives a nice overview of those competences for the data source. So what are the expertise areas? What are the responsibilities, the tasks, knowledge, skills, and abilities, and learning outcomes? So it's really nice to check that out if you have time. And we recommend it with regard to this data steward skills tool that uh, we further need to include that in the competency hub. And we need to uh, organize a committee of stakeholders and a working group to actually create this a tool. And that of course also includes an owner uh, of this uh, uh, a tool. So the next slide. So this is a quick summary of uh, our report. I'm not going to uh, read it out loud, but I want to focus on uh, the second element that is on the slide. So these are the first steps towards implementation in the Netherlands. So what, what did we do to further continue uh, the report? So we wanted to make sure that this isn't just something that is a report that is on a desk or in a drawer. Um, so uh, for that reason, we included that many stakeholders in the report. And, and uh, based on that, we already, we are pretty sure already that most of the organizations are already taking up the recommendations of, uh, of, of our report. And uh, we actually have, are uh, working on formalizing the recommendations into the follow-up program. So that is the, the, for the upcoming uh, uh, nine years, the FAIR data program in the Netherlands. And all the recommendations will be uh, taken along and hopefully also including the data steward skills tool that we envision. Um, we uh, published, as mentioned already, part of the framework already in the EBI Competency Hub, and we included uh, uh, part of, the co of our recommendations and competencies already in Dutch training efforts. And there, I've mentioned a few on the slide, but we have many more uh, resources with regard to uh, uh, trainings in the Netherlands. And I'm really proud to say that we managed to get the basic job uh, components for a data steward in our formal university system already. It, it's not yet uh, uh, in print, but we expect to be in the next version of the, of the formal university profile uh, system that we have the data steward included. And we're going to continue this task to realize this as well in university uh, medical centers. So the next slide. So this is actually my last slide because I didn't highlight that much the networking and community perspective of fair, of uh, fair data stewardship and of professionalizing data stewardship. But I think this is really, really important. And we also included that, that element in the job profile. So the networking and the community building aspect is a, a really important aspect of, of uh, being a data steward. And we have in the Netherlands, I just wanted to mention that we have many initiatives, but we also have the data steward interest group. Uh, which has a Slack channel with over, uh, well, almost 400 members nationally and internationally. And this is a really nice and vibrant community for data stewards to, uh, to exchange their experiences. And they all join on personal titles, so they don't represent an organization. But if you are inspired, if you are a data steward and you want to hear about well, Dutch, but also international developments around data stewardship, and you want to exchange experiences, uh, please click the link in the in the slides and join the Slack channel and you're really welcome to join this community and uh, uh, professionalize data stewardship together from the uh, well the, the the work that you're currently doing uh, already. So then the final slides. 
Lictra is the acknowledgement. So there's a reference to a report. And if you want to more, want to know more about it, please contact me. Uh, I'm really thankful to all the authors of the report. And then the next slides mentions all the organizations that are and the people that were included in the report. Uh, so this is the end of my talk, and if you have questions, I'm happy to take them either in the chat or uh, at any other uh, moment. So thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Yetim, for this very informative presentation. You gave us a really great overview. So if there are any questions, please ask them right now or type them into the chat. I think your slides were so structured and with so much information. <laughs> yes, you in some cases, a bit of an, an, over, an information kill. But if, if you further on have questions, please type them in the chat. I'm very, I will, I will say on board, and this is a Heather's presentation as well, because Heather's organization was involved in, in our report as well. So she's a really good example of what is happening uh, on, the, on the floor, on the working floor already. Um, and uh, yeah, there is a question actually. Three FTEs, whether that uh, three FTE data stewards is achievable. I think that's a really, really good question. We need to realize it, but I think we're still far away from that, as I mentioned already. But what we, the reason why we drafted out those numbers in, uh, and I've included them in, in our uh, pres in my presentation as well, is that we actually are uh, currently are building the FAIR data program, but combined with that, we want to ask the uh, uh, government in the Netherlands to finance data stewardship. So we need to have these numbers, and I think they're pretty realistic, well, in about, say, uh, something like 10 years, because that is the aim, uh, the, the, broad, the broadness of, the, uh, of, of our proposal. But we actually hope that the government will fund those, uh, those three FTE data stewards. But currently, it isn't achievable at all. I think uh, most of the organizations that are, well, hardly, I know maybe Heather can, can tell a little bit about it, but maybe there are overall for an organization of more than 10, maybe even 20 reach, uh, uh, support staff data stewards. So that is not enough. So achievable, we need to realize that, but well, it will take a while. Yeah. All right, thank you. There's an, another question I can read it out. We are a very demand-driven organization. How do you make researchers aware that they need a data steward so that they request one? Yeah, this is a really, so the, the awareness uh, perspective is, is really important, but really difficult as well. So I think there are many elements to, to this. So I think Heather will highlight some of them as well. So one element is being visible. Uh, and you can only do that when your organization makes you visible. So that means if we, we, that is also a very good reason to professionalize data stewardship, not only to well have the capacity, but to show that there actually is an office, uh, but, but more than just an office, that there are researchers who are embedded in a project. So if you organize a project, if you ask for funding, if you do an international or national co uh, uh, collaboration, you need to make sure uh, that you have data stewards in the project on the job so they don't need to they don't have to find you they are part of the project team so that is why we are, are in report speaking of uh, research oriented data steward but also uh, of data oriented researchers so we need to have data oriented researchers in a project and i think that is a really good first step towards professionalizing data stewardship so have them in the in the project and of course the other aspect is well shout out that you are there because researchers will realize at a certain moment when they apply for uh, funding or when they uh, lose their data that they had to organize it differently. But I think that is also, that is always there the, uh, after something went wrong a phase, but yeah, so the, the carrots, so showing that you are really of, of value, but this is really difficult. I fully agree. Yeah, 